Good afternoon, friends. I'm going to uh, share with you guys a video on persecution. So, but it, it's it's funny how, how things work out, how the Lord works. Um, you know, you always, as believers, we're always looking for confirmation. And, um, you know, we get confirmation from the Word of God. We get confirmation from all the believers. And uh, right before I started recording this video, I, I stumbled upon a video um, from uh, Appalachia St uh, Homestead. Uh, the lady's name is Patera. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of her or if you guys follow her. So um, so anyway, so I was watching her video. And her video, um, I'll link it on here so you guys can check it out. And she was talking about how right now the feds, um, the FBI and the you know, Department of Justice and all, they are um, flagging any purchases of faith-based, especially Bibles, um, um, par uh, stuff that you buy online. So, like, if you make a purchase online of a Bible, it's being flagged. So, like, they, they're knowing that you're buying these. So, why? Why are they doing this? I mean, if you guys, you know, are well-versed or are caught up uh, on, you know, the politics of this country, the United States, you see how they're tagging one group of people as, uh, you know, because we support a certain candidate, we are, you know, we're extremists, you know. <laughs> I, I, th that I can't understand because, you know, most Christians that I know are, are loving people, uh, only want the right thing to be done, you know, only want to live in a way that's honoring and pleasing to God. And that has to be a clean life. It, it's not a life of uh, of thievery. It's not a life of being evil and mean and doing, you know, being deceitful like the politicians are. And, and it's so ironic how they're trying to tag us and come after us. But, you know, in, um, in Isaiah chapter 5, I believe, verse 20, it says, you know, the day will come where they will call evil good and good evil. So, you know, we're there, guys. We're there. So now they're trying to, um, you know, just tag everybody who's buying Bibles and stuff like that. And, you know, and many people who believe in the Second Amendment are saying that when they buy stuff online, they're also being flagged. So whatever. So I guess they're going to flag my channel because 99% of my videos are all faith-based and I just speak about the, the Word of God. So, um... She she talks about this, and so the title of my video, which I had put this together over the weekend, is um, "What if persecution comes your way? What if persecution comes your way?" I've been reading through the Book of Exodus, and the Lord has been speaking to me so much through the Book of Exodus. I haven't recorded you know videos on it, but it's so much. I've been writing so much on the Book of Exodus, and this is probably. It's got to be at least my fifth or sixth time reading through the whole book. And it's so beautiful how there are things there that just because you think you read it already a couple of times or you've heard countless sermons on it, you think you know it all, but you don't. The Lord speaks to you even in the things that you missed. And it's not that you missed it because I think I truly believe that the Lord speaks to us right where we where you are. You might read a verse, right, might read a chapter today, and it doesn't impact and it doesn't really touch you and it's not speaking to you as much as if when you get to it a year later, two years later, 10 years later, and you're going through something in your life or you're becoming more mature believer. And when you read it, you're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. For instance, I'll mention something at the end of this video, if I remember about how that happened to me reading through the book of Exodus. So as I was reading through chapter 14, um, this, this weekend, um, I want to share a couple of verses with you guys. And um, let me just read the verses first. Is Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 12, we're going to read first. And it says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there, was no, there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you uh, you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than, than that we should die here in the wilderness. And, and I think about that. That's because they saw Pharaoh because Pharaoh realized you know, he let the Egyptian go and he's like, you know, I'm going to go after him. That's it. And he, I guess he changed his mind. You know, if you watch the Ten Commandments, the movie, it's the wife that was 
bugging them and tell them you're going to let them get away with that. But that's not scriptural. It's not how it is. But anyway, something led Pharaoh to go after them. He said, that's it. I'm going to go after them. So he's going after them. And the Egyptians and the, the Hebrews are seeing this. And they're telling Moses, this is why you brought us out here. So that he can kill us out here. At least if we would have stayed in, e in, in e Egypt, we would have had bread. We would have been working. And we would have, you know, would have been okay. Which they weren't because they were actually enslaved. But what I want to do is through these verses... I'm not looking to teach you anything, okay? I'm not, I don't want to teach you anything. But my goal is to get you to do a self-evaluation as to how much you trust God. Because we see in these verses how the the Hebrews didn't trust God. Especially when things, okay, how much do you trust God? Especially when things are not, going, are not looking bright, but gloomy. When the road is not smooth, but rough. When the provisions are, are lacking and not bountiful. When your health is weak and not strong, how do you react when you are being persecuted? When you see your enemy ready to attack you? When you are in the wilderness? When you see no way forward? Do you easily forget all the things God has already delivered you from and the things he has brought you through? Do you lose sight of the path he has put you on and the promises he has made to you? By allowing the enemy to place your focus on what's behind you? Or do you look with more intent and focus on what's ahead of you in Christ Jesus? So these are questions that only you can answer for yourself, okay? Do you crumble, for lack of a better word? Do you crumble when persecution comes, when trials come, when, when sickness comes, when loss comes? Do you crumble or do you trust in God? Do you lean more on the Lord? And that's what we should be doing. And then we read, if we go a little further down, and we continue reading in verse 13 through 15, we read, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. We have been blessed with having... So th this is my thing. is I, we, we read in Exodus what the Lord has brought the um, Hebrews through. And one of the things that I found reading through the book of Exodus this time, and it was amazing. It's like I was going to make a video on it, on it, but I chose not to um, because I was going to... I was going to relate it to the rapture, a sort of rapture or, or a precursor or or like a foreshadowing of the rapture. But I chose not to because um, somebody who I know who's really deep in the word of God gives me some wise counsel. And I shared with that person what I was going to post. And they said to me, no, no, this and that. And th that person actually talked me out of it, which is beautiful. So, But anyway, if you go through the plagues, okay, the 10 plagues. After the fourth plague, every single time, okay, when before the plague starts, you see it says it in scripture where God separated the Hebrews. God protected them, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but it tells us how God protected them from that plague. He protected them from every single plague after the fourth plague. You know, um, I don't I don't remember them in order, but anything that happened after the fourth plague, from the fifth plague all the way to the tenth, we know the tenth, of course, is the uh, the plague of death, and where they were told it was the Passover when they were told to put the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost, and you know if the the um, death passes by, it's going to see that and pass by their houses and protect them. But anyway, even in the other ones. Just go back and read. Read all the plagues and you'll see after the fourth how God protected the children of Israel, which was so beautiful. I never really noticed that. You know, sometimes you're just reading quickly through scripture or or even if not reading quickly, you're not paying close attention to something. And as I saw that the first time, I'm like, oh, well, wait a minute. And then as I went to the next plague, I saw the same thing. And to the next plague, I highlighted them all in my Bible, every single verse that says that. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I wish I had my Bible with me so I could read it to you guys. But anyway, go read it. I believe it begins um, around chapter 9, 10, 10 maybe. And, and you'll see it So in Exodus chapter 10. So my thing is this. We have been blessed with the word of God today. Okay, We have the word of God. We can see. We can see all these stories, all these accounts, all these people that we got to know and love through scripture. And we got to see many successes and many failures. 
Okay, we got to see many people who achieved things and you know went through a lot of success. Um, we also saw many victories. Okay, we also saw many defeats. We saw many trials. We saw a lot of. We see a lot of things told to us in scripture. But because we get to look back, we can easily laugh or judge these personalities in scripture because of their lack of faith or trust in God, as we read right now, as we see right here in Exodus. And especially after he has delivered them countless times. Okay, and I just mentioned, we see how in the book of Exodus, the Lord delivered the Hebrews so, so many times. And yet still, they doubted. Yet still, they didn't trust him. Yet still, they had fear, okay? But we also see it all throughout the New Testament, okay? Even after performing countless miracles, the people surrounding Jesus would continually ask the, the Lord to show them a miracle or a sign. How many times do we see that in Scripture? We read it. And a lot of people, and I used to do, when I first came to the Lord, I used to do it where like, I can't believe that the disciples, you know, they didn't trust Jesus. I can't believe that all the people that all, that followed Jesus after seeing signs and wonders and miracles that he performed, many of them left. Many of them were like disheartened and they left and, and, and they didn't believe who he was. After seeing all these things, I said, if it was me, I would believe instantly. If it was me, I wouldn't have denied uh, Jesus like Peter did. I wouldn't have betrayed Jesus like... Um, like Judas did. I tell my I used to tell myself that. But I, I think maybe like two or three years into my walk, the Lord started speaking to me. And my heart started breaking for the disciples. And I'm like, you know what? They didn't know because they don't have scripture. I mean, they have the Lord with them, but they didn't have the Bible written so they can read it and see it and say, wow, this is what it is. I mean, yeah, they did have the Old Testament. Okay, the, the Tanakh, I believe it's called, the Jewish uh, books. Um, they did have that, and, you know, the prophets foretold a lot of the stuff that, you know, Jesus was fulfilling. But still, it's 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 easy to knock people and say, oh, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that. But you never know. And again, I'm reminded of Peter when Jesus told him that before the rooster crows, he's going to deny him three times. And Peter said, oh, not me, Lord. I would never deny you. I would never deny you. And we see what happened with Peter. So we need to be careful on judging other believers and how we think that, oh, I wouldn't react like that. Oh, I don't understand scripture. That Scripture's not like that. That's not what scripture's telling me. And we see this happening all the time. That's not what scripture says. That's not what, what makes me or what makes me better, a better Christian, a more mature Christian, uh, a, a Christian with more discernment than you and vice versa. What makes you wiser than me? What gives you more discernment and understanding than, than me? The Holy Spirit is speaking to you in, in whatever situation you're in or whatever level you're at of understanding. And he's speaking to me the same way. You know, he's speaking to me in my level of understanding, in my way. And he's giving me the discernment that I, I need, not that we all need, that I need as an individual to understand the word of God. So we need to be careful. We can't judge people, especially look at, we look at these people in scripture, how, you know, they were, they, we, we say, wow, I can't believe that they didn't, well, guys, because we see it. They didn't see that. And there are things happening in the world now that many Christians are not seeing. They're not seeing it. But we need to pray, Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes and let them see what's going on, what's happening in this world. So anyway, I wanted to share that, that I got from, uh, from, uh, from scripture and um, from the book of Exodus. The other thing is I wanted to ask you guys, if you guys have subscribed to my channel, um, if you can kindly go and, and check to see if you are subscribed. Because I was uh, some of the um, YouTubers that I follow... A couple of them were complaining that um, they've lost subscribers. And like, And so when people reach out to them, like, oh, I haven't heard from you. And then they, you know, they, he tells them, like, well, I've been on there and I've been posting videos. But they notice that they've been unsubscribed. Like, YouTube had randomly unsubscribed them. And that happens a lot, I, I, I hear. So, you know, just check to make sure you're still subscribed if you aren't kindly subscribed. Um, the other thing is I'm going to uh, post my... Um, the link to my uh, church, the website to my church on here. Um, it's not my church. It's the church I attend. We have a building fund campaign going on. We're trying to raise some funds for hopefully, you know, Lord willing, we can get our own place. 
hopefully this year or whatever the you know according to the lord's plan so if you can donate whatever you can if not at least pray for us and another reminder is that um every sunday i've been posting prayer video i lift up whatever prayer request is submitted to me so if you have any prayer needs that you need any requests that you would like lifted up in that video put them in the comments here and i write them down and then when i record that video i'll post it up and and you know hopefully you'll, you'll get to see it so um with that i'll let you guys go and i think i'm gonna post maybe one more video this week besides the prayer video i have an idea of something that the lord's been placed on my heart anyway god bless you my friends take care